ourselves in those positions. Perhaps tell us about what HOA finance, you know, effectively is. I know that complexes can also, uh, you know, tap into it. What exactly is this option that uh, complexes in the states are able to find themselves um, certainly being able to at least solve this problem in the event where they find uh, themselves in it? Okay. So, Zama, you know that um, idiom, you pay, I pay, we grow. Uh, so that's like the basic principle, right? The foundation upon which this evening is one that if you're following social media I know you would have already seen it um, because a lot of us get affected by it if in the event where we find ourselves living in a complex or in a state that falls within this realm we're looking at all you need to know about homeowners association finance we're going to look at what it is um, what you need to watch out for before as a you know, HOA or certainly as a board of corporate you approach uh, different financiers. We're going to be looking at how to also make sure you don't get yourselves to a position where you're insolvent and all the things that you need to know about what happens if you do find yourself in that position and who else to help us make uh, sense of this than somebody who deals with this very regularly. Just before we came on air, he was actually on a call with somebody from one of the estate study managers talking about this very thing. And their services are about to be closed, and they need to make sure that they negotiate with the municipality to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that is Ebo Kwabri, who's a real estate principal at properties.com. Ebo, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Good evening, Zaba, and it's always a pleasure to be on the show. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to have you with us, Evo. I mean, this this topic is is one that has certainly been trending. Uh, if if we have to be honest, it's been trending because we saw when uh, it was the city of Toronto that started this. Mm -hmm. COJ also then followed suit with closing different services. Mm -hmm. They obviously started with the big buildings, right? Mm -hmm. And and so many of us were like, oh well, we're not affected really. Uh, but then they started going for the complexes, the estates. Where find that where uh, you know services weren't paid for for an extended period of time. Uh -huh. Before we get to how we can avoid that, what to do if we find ourselves in those positions? Perhaps tell us about what HOA finance you know effectively is. I know that complexes can also uh, you know tap into it. What exactly is this option that uh, complexes in the states are able to find themselves um, certainly being able to at least solve? this problem in the event where they find uh, themselves in it. Okay. So, Zama, you know that um, idiom, you pay, I pay, we grow. Uh, so that's like the basic principle, right? The foundation upon which uh, community schemes, um, and now for this topic, homeowners association finance is actually all built around. Because at the end of the day, we all live in together and we've got a common interest. We've got a common interest of making sure that our asset value grows. Now, for us to be able to do that and to have some of the privileges that comes with living in a, a secure estate like security, um, proper garden services, we need to collect money together and to get this done. And that's basically the principle um, that finds or basically starts you guys collected money together to fund the estate. And I think the, the, the big thing there becomes a, we, we've we appointed a managing agent uh, as the members of, if it's a community scheme of the body corporate, the, the members of the HOA, you're paying your, you know, your monthly levies, but then for some other reason, the money doesn't get to the municipality. Yeah. And I'm seeing an, an increasing number of these um, across different you know types of schemes and and I think it's 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 quite the red flag because it's also you know demonstrating that it's either there is you know the the directors or certainly that the trustees aren't you know doing their job or as far as they are concerned payments are being made uh, but they're not being made and so the the HOA or certainly the community scheme then runs this 
itself in, in, in the red, essentially. Right. So in the event where you're a member of the community scheme or you live in this particular state and you get the notice, because they've they been putting up notices uh, you know, in the various uh, schemes, what what can you do as a member? Because you're not a trustee and you're just thinking, well, I pay every month, so you're up to date, but then somehow there's, there's, there seems to be an issue in the system where the money is not getting to the municipality. So, so you know how, um, how do we put this? Remember when you started earning your first bucks, right? The first thing that you got when you got maybe that 10 rand was, here, go buy sweets, but don't spend it all. Um, well, for me, that was how it, it started, my relationship with money. Uh, it's the same thing within the estate. The problem has been that, unfortunately, um, within the estate, most of the time, people have focused on the prestige of the estate more than the basic um, budgeting and the day-to-day -day living expenses. So we are very quick to maybe put a big sign that, you know, when you're coming into the gate, it's it speaks prominence. Um, it's great. It adds value, but w its repercussions if you cannot pay your basic um, COJ slash um bills and your lights are off. To to what's the what is the real value? So, bottom line, proper budgeting um, is something that has been missing in in um, community schemes HOA specifically, and the reason we have found is that. The managing agents placed in these um, community schemes do not necessarily come from a finance background. Um, and oftentimes, even when they claim to do your administrative and the financial side, do not really understand the day-to-day -day running or the management of a value of a rand. So that's where community schemes need to be started from. How do you budget properly? How do you manage the money properly? Because if your budget is done properly and you make provision for um, eventualities, you should not have your lights being turned off. But now it's happened. Your estate is in a bad state and the lights are currently going off. We found that the biggest thing, I mean, we, we pride ourselves, if, if you've listened to any of the shows we've been on, we pride ourselves on picking up distressed properties and actually managing them better. It's, it's like, <laughs> I breathe with excitement every single time I see a distressed um, community scheme because it says that you can put a footprint on getting things right. So first things first, face the reality. You don't have what you have, it's okay. Now, I was taught that when you don't have something, the first way of starting off is going to wherever you owe and saying, hey, I'm sorry, I owe you. Can we talk and be honest about it? Show your books. Right, so um, there's a community scheme we just took over now in October, and literally the managing agent there for 14 years had run this estate into the ground, and they could not even afford 100,000 per month, whereas their basic expenses is 350. What did we do? Sit down with Ekrilani and let Ekrilani know you're collecting 100,000 every single month, and yet your expenses are 300. So therefore, you make a commitment of 30 percent coming to them on a consistent basis with the view of adjusting as you're going along. When you do that, these people listen because now they are able to get a consistent inflow of income. Um, that's the first part. Then now that you have that, you need to be honest and say, as owners, where can we really look at adjusting the actual levy bill and um, helping ourselves out and, and then having that conversation. And, but, but then, of course, most of the time, you also find that there's that somebody that just basically never pays. Uh, so we need to be honest about these people and say, when you pay and I pay, we grow. So when I pay, you don't pay, we sink. So therefore, we need to really talk about you. Do you really need to live here? And if you don't, how do we ship you out? And if you don't need to be shipped out, how do we help you manage your finances better so it doesn't hurt the community as a whole? I am in conversation this evening with Ewa Quagra, who's a real estate principal at properties.com, looking at all you need to know about homeowners association finance. That's, of course, in the event that you find yourselves in that same situation as a homeowners association where you do fall into financial trouble. Uh, you want to look at what to avoid, how to get out of it, 
and of course how to budget properly and efficiently so that you don't have to get back into those troubling times. And I also want to find out from you at home if you've ever actually found yourselves in a situation where your particular estate falls behind on its bills and you know whether that was an issue that ultimately got resolved and if so what did you do as the members because i think it's it's, it's one thing where you are one of the members that is paying every month and you're always on top of your bills only to find that the people that you're living with are not doing the same or of course the other scenario is where the managing agent is not doing so and anyway, i want us to look at the, the two scenarios but let's start with and this is something that that you, you mentioned that the, you might just find that somebody that lives in the same community or you know state as you, there are just certain people who don't pay. It may be relatively easier to absorb this this particular default when you're in a in a bigger estate, but we know that in slightly smaller ones that is simply not possible. The budget is so tight, uh, and when one person doesn't pay, it is fouled. What are the steps? Uh, that can be taken for members uh, who do not pay, whether of course we're in a big, um, you know, community or a smaller one. Okay. So, so the first part is um, the managing agent. If they were the assault, the first thing they would actually do is to engage this person on a personal level. Um, it starts off with that little uh, message, basically saying, "Hey, James, you've defaulted on this date, and you need to catch up." And following up with that phone call to say, hey, why did you not, why did you not pay? How can we help you resolve this issue? Um, if you started from there, you're able to already know what the problem is. Um, and when the person gives you stories, I mean, in, in, in the bank, the first thing we ask for is your financial statement, right? So you need to ask for the bank statement, sit down with the person and look, is he lying? Has he, has he, has he lost his job? If, if he's lost his job, it's already indicating that he would never be able to pay going forward um, unless something drastically changes in their life. So how do you then assist them to even sell the pr property if they must at proceeds? You know, sometimes we hold on and we think, oh, like, oh, we let you fall in because you have you were living in a grand estate and you had to move out. No, sometimes these things happen so that you can actually reset your life and actually have more. Um, sometimes it's a smaller house that actually gives you that, um, what do you call it, that spring, right, to actually create better wealth. So these things happen. I think um, earlier on we were talking about school fees. They happen so that you can learn how to reset um, yourself financially and move on from there. So that's the first part. And then, of course, it fails. Some people just don't listen to all these um, soft things and they just, they just get entrenched in. The law allows that basically if one doesn't pay their um, levies, that their, their properties right, um, can actually get attached in the long run. So if you follow the steps, you make sure that they got the notices, um, your, you follow the articles of incorporation. It said after 90 days, for example, that it, the account needs to be handed over. You handed it over. You followed up with the lawyers. You would be able to get it all the way to the, must, to the magistrate court and actually be able to do an attachment. And once that is done, it means that the property gets auctioned off and new people come in. Now, there's the common view to say, okay, but wait, um, are you not really creating or getting people to go backwards? It all starts from the conversation, letting people know the real consequences of the actions they make. Because if you get all the way to the point where your property gets attached, it's not just the property that is getting attached, it's your name that's getting attached because you're going to have a listing against your name. Having a listing against your name means that financially, you actually fall out of this whole economic um, community that we are all in. So you need to then, at some point, be able to um, lend yourself to reason so that you can be rehabilitated. And, and I think that's, that, that's such a, a great starting point, right? That you, especially right now, we're living in, in the era of COVID where there are so many different circumstances that do have a financial effect and, you know, does impact your ability to make some of those payments and make them on time. So starting it with the conversation in the event where somebody is in arrears and in the event where they're, they're not, uh, you know, forthcoming and don't make the necessary arrangements, then of course we do need to follow the, the necessary steps because the reality is you don't want somebody who isn't paying um, and also isn't being truthful about uh, you know their inability to pay 
to a just enjoy the the services that everybody else is paying for, but also and I think this is probably the more alarming part to be jeopardizing. Um, those because the reality of a member not paying is that it does jeopardize everybody else and compromises your ability to be able to make certain payments. But then we know that there's the, the other side where the managing agent it's may be the, the one that is at fault. And, and I want us to address that one because in the slightly bigger you know communities or schemes, you, you'll find that yes, there will be people who default, but their collection rate is actually relatively high. Mm -hmm. And even with the, the usual suspects who sometimes are maybe a month or two months late, they're still collecting more than enough to even have, you know, put certain yes, funds in the reserve fund. But it's the, the fault is with the with the managing agent. How can we'll say unscrupulous <laughs> or yeah. unprofessional, unprofessional or incompetent managing agents be dealt with. I'm hearing yeah. so many stories of this and people are struggling to get their managing agents out. Yeah. And I think more than anything, they don't know what the processes are. They don't know what the law says. And they sometimes just feel very disempowered yeah. because the managing agent has all this data, doesn't want to hand over any files and doesn't essentially want to give up power. Sometimes they'll even go to the extent of finding uh, another managing agent that you actually want to take over your, your estate, but the one that is currently in power doesn't want to let go. So how do they then at home deal with managing agents who are like that? So I think it's part three of the sectional title schemes management act, um, the prescribed management rules, right? It speaks to finances within a community scheme. And oftentimes, I don't know, but for some odd reason, most managing agents, I don't know whether they don't read or what, um, but they hide behind like this new um, poppy thing that has come up and then everybody's hiding behind poppy. You, you sharing the financial information to the um, community members, it's not disclosing anything about another person. It is their right to know because the Sectional Title Schemes Management Act, the prescribed management rules, um, does actually stipulate that you should have for each specific unit all their finances and when requested by the member in writing should be availed to them. So the first part, demand that they open the books. If they don't, write to me. Write to me, I will deal with them for you. you there's no managing agent that can hide behind Poppy to not give you financial information when you're asking for it. That's number one. And now if you open the books, um, you know, sometimes financial, um, annual financial statements are really great to read, but reality, most of us don't understand accounting. We're looking at assets, non-current assets. We don't really know what all these things mean. But put a bank statement in front of anyone and one can see that's money in, that's money out. What's this money about? So demand the raw data. The managing agents are supposed to be keeping the bank statement in itself also as part of the books on a on a man-to-man -man basis as part of the general ledger. So when you're asking for all these documents, they're supposed to give it. Now, when you're able to look through those, if they've been unscrupulous, you'll be able to pick it up. Now, the sectional titles schemes um, act, right, also speaks to the fact that the directors or in the, well it covers mainly the trustees but most of the time because um the hoas are being basically um, applying um, some of the sectional title schemes management rules most of those rules also then apply to them so if you're looking at the directors and staff the first thing is that they should be able to pass resolutions on core expenses i'm not talking about the day-to-day pay the gardener, Tom, that, that, that. Those are covered in contracts, they're there. But if there's any contractual work that has been happening, because that's actually where most of the money gets siphoned off. Um, it's Tom, the, Tom the, the director, partnering up with um, Peter, the managing agent, and deciding to go and hire Tom's brother um, to come and do the garden, um, which John would have charged 30,000 Rand, but now because it's Tom's brother, he charges 60, and then the 30,000 is being put off somewhere. You need to ask them on what basis they have these contracts in place and, and see if they cannot be reviewed. That's the first place. Um, and you find how much money you can save. I mean, on this one estate that we took, for example, that had 350,000 Rand worth of its cost, but only collecting 100,000. These are some of the ways we've been able to shave 
of cost to the point that they are able to slowly now come to a point where they pay more on the outstandings and getting better. So rule number one, open the books. Rule number two, they can't hide. Open the books. Demand it, demand it, demand it. Rule number three, once you've seen the books, if everything is on point, as owners, come together, decide how to negotiate, 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 and cut your bills down. Now, if the managing agent is found wanting, all managing agents are supposed to be covered um, by the under the Fidelity Fund Certificate of the Now Property Practitioners Act, right? So you need to, of course, report them. Um, people talk about managing agents, and we get the question, do you belong to NAMA? NAMA is not uh, uh, by force. You don't have to belong to it by force as per the Act. What you need to, what everybody needs to belong to is the Property Practitioners um, regulatory authority that issues the Fidelity Fund Certificate. So request for that, complain against that, and from there, put in place measures to actually dismiss them. Because if I take one rent from you that is not mine, I will take 100,000 rent from you very easily. Mm -hmm. So do not compromise. Do not say, oh, shame, they didn't know. If they take what is not theirs, they need to go. So get rid of them and move on, find better uh, managing agents who will basically take your funds into in, as if it's their own and utilize it for your benefits without stealing from you. Mm. And I, I, I think I want to echo what uh, it was saying that reach out to, to them, uh, especially in the event where a managing agent is giving you stories. Uh, and I know that a lot of that happens. I get messages all the time um, that talk about the different stories that managing agents are giving people who live in different communities where they're struggling to get rid of their managing agents. And that's something that we need to deal with effectively because you are able to put a managing agent on notice. Uh, so if you have a one-year contract, you are able to put them on notice. Uh, just make sure that you, know, you understand the terms of their contract and you know, follow, of course, um, you know what that contract says in the event where you want to change that. Well, for myself, Zamanto Kumalo, and the rest of the Private Property Podcast team, that's it from us this evening. We'll be back on your screens tomorrow at 7 p.m. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.